Well, hey everybody, it's Jim, and I am excited to have you back with me for another exciting episode of Kit Bashing. Today we are going to be making something really fun. We are continuing to explore the potential energy found in a rubber band. Rubber bands are full of all sorts of energy, and so today we are going to explore how that works. And I'm going to make sure that both of my feeds, hey, it looks like both of my feeds are working. Yay! Um... We're going to explore more of this potential energy that a rubber band has. See? Potential. And then we put it to work. Ow. Anyway, I'm Jim. I'm your host. And you're watching Kit Bashing. Hey everybody, welcome to Kip Bashing. I see John Mack is in the crowd on our YouTube side. Hey John, how's it going? Good to see you, sir. Um, we are very excited today because I've got a fun, fun build that you're going to really, really enjoy. Um, if you are with us live with Tuesday, I think it is, uh, at 1 o'clock, you can add comments. Um, and so... I, and I will try to respond to them in real time as much as I can. If you are not here, you can still add comments, and I'll try to add to them after the fact and the video comes on. So uh, John is is a busy man. He's always on work calls. But I do appreciate you being here because those numbers always help. And as always, if you are a YouTuber and you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button and the all the little uh, notification bells and things like that. If you're watching on YouTube uh, or on Facebook, rather, make sure you like the channel so that way you'll get notifications when we do things like live videos. So today we're building something really cool, and I've got my prototype here. This is uh, version 1.0. We're actually building version 1.1 today, but this is a rubber band powered paddle boat. It's really, really fun. And I've even got a little bucket of water to test this out thing. It floats, it uses ballasts to help keep it above water, and I threw a flag on with a number 42 because that is the answer. So what do we need to build this kit? Well, here is the shopping list. You will need tape. And again, I've got my blue gaff tape. I've got the big roll of it today. If you are out of the gaff tape, if you if you ordered a kit or if you didn't get a kit, uh, any tape will work. You can use masking tape, scotch tape. I've got scotch tape here too. Um, some tapes will be harder than others. Duct tape is a pretty good one because it sticks to everything, though good uh, luck getting it off. So uh, we've got the Rush family and we've got Mary here. Hopefully I can be flexible. I can only bend so far. Um, we have the tape. We also need rubber bands and uh i think mary was actually talking about the rubber bands but yes they do definitely need to be flexible you need some paper clips for today's challenge we need tongue depressors popsicle sticks we need our syringes these are in the wrapping the syringes are the needle um except there's no needle because that would be dangerous you need your index cards and then also we're going to need our marbles and our dosing cup one of them anyway and a pair of scissors so if you don't have those things and you're building along um, you can hit pause and then you can come back and unpause and i'm still going to be here so that is the list of items you need uh, i'd also like to point out that jane is here as usual jane is one of my favorite people she donated some uh, equipment through another uh nonprofit yesterday and I, I do appreciate that um my name is jim for those of you who are new to the show i am your host and i i do hope that you enjoy this if you're having fun uh you can host watch parties on facebook you can share this on youtube get the word out um there's a couple ways you can get hold of us if you'd like to send me an email um we have the comments but you can also uh send me an email directly and that's at jim or i'm sorry at kip bashing at made new omaha.com i apologize i had to uh switch something really quickly because it wanted to it, it thought i was trying to tell it to end the stream and i was like no don't do that um kip bashing at made new omaha.com is that no no don't worry these aren't the good scissors these scissors are actually uh <laughs> these have seen better days they really have um 
If you don't want to email us, if you want to go see us on Facebook, we are on facebook.com slash Made New Omaha. And you can also see us on our website, which is madenewomaha.com. I'd be happy to talk to you on any of those as well as the comments. So today we're going to get into a really fun project. We have talked several times in the recent past about potential energy. Potential energy is energy that is stored in something that can be released when you need it. So a rubber band is a good example of potential energy because you can take that energy and now I can wind this up, get some kinetic motion going where it's spinning around, and then when I let go, it releases that energy. And so this is a cool physics tool that is also something that's going to help us build a boat today. And I know everybody was looking for Luke, and they want to know where Luke is. Luke has the day off. Uh, his union uh, rep has negotiated long and hard so that he can get some time away every now and then. Um, actually, he's doing some fun stuff at home. But um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So today, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by unwrapping our syringes, if you've got those. Now, for those of you who don't have a kit at home, if you are building this without a maker kit, uh, let's say you've assembled your own kit or you have uh, just scrounged through your house and found a few things, you don't need to use a syringe for this step. You could use a few pieces of styrofoam. What we're going to be doing with our syringes is we're going to be taking the plunger part out and if you pull it feels like when it gets to the end that you can't pull it any farther you just pull it a little harder and that comes out and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using tape to seal up the end of this and you really you only need to tape up the big hole in the back because this small hole once that's sealed up it won't let fluid escape but I'm going to tape up both sides because better safe than sorry if you tape up both sides uh, you will also uh, double your chances of things not exploding on you. Um, there is a force in nature called capillary action, and we'll explore that more in another episode. But capillary action is basically uh, the force that if you take like a drinking straw, for example, and you stick that uh, into something, as soon as it touches that water, if you watch it very closely, you'll see that the water traces up the straw just a little bit and so capillary action um, if the top was open here and I dipped this into water you would see that but with the top end sealed um, it would still try but the air pressure would keep it out so what I'm doing here to explain for those of you who are watching I have created a little ballast so this is uh, in, in nautical terms uh, a ballast is something that will hold air to help you keep your uh, sea vehicle afloat. Now in a submarine they have ballasts that can be drained and filled out and, and when they drain the ballast it makes it easier for the submarine to sink and then when they fill those ballasts with air it brings the submarine to the surface. And so submarines have ballasts that are adjustable. For most vehicles, so uh, let's say a pontoon boat, there's a really good example. Um, the ballast, so the pontoon uh, has those those large, it looks almost like 55 gallon drums that are welded together. Sometimes that's what they are, uh, depending on who built your pontoon boat. They have ballasts on either side. We're going to need two of these, so I'm going to take my other syringe and I'm going to unwrap that as well. Ugh, there we go. Got it unwrapped. If yours are already unwrapped because we've done other experiments with them in the past, you just saved a step. And we're going to take more tape. And again, like I said, there is not a necessary type of tape to use. Um, if you use tape like a masking tape, you might have some struggles uh, just because this will be something that we're putting in water today. Um, but if uh, you use like duct tape, that's pretty uh, impervious to water. The big thing is that as long as you uh, attach everything before you put it in the water, you'll probably be okay. If you don't do that, then it could be a bad day. So I am, oh, I can multitask, believe me. Um, Jane said it's a good thing I can multitask. It is a good thing. If I couldn't multitask, oh my goodness, I don't know what I would be doing uh, right now. I, I know what I'd be doing. I'd be sitting here staring quietly 
at whatever I was doing and not talking to you while I'm making my little ballast. So now I've made two of these. You can see I've got a seal on one end. I just put the seal on the, you probably don't need this like I said, but I'm gonna be safe. So we've got two of these. This is step one in building our amazing watercraft. So step two, we need to start getting our frame assembled. And to do that, we're gonna go over to my overhead camera so you can see everything. And I'm gonna move some things out of the way or where I need them. I've got my two ballasts here. Now what we need to do is we need to set up our frame. Our frame is gonna consist of a few parts. Parts on each of the sides, we have two of the big tongue depressors. So remember, tongue depressors are big, popsicle sticks are small. If you have any confusion, that is what you need to look at. So we're gonna set up two tongue depressors and then we're gonna have two popsicle sticks and this is the basic shape of our frame and if it's not perfectly square, that's okay. Um, we're also on the underside going to use two pieces of popsicle stick to, to give the boat kind of that a point and this will actually serve a purpose at some point and uh, if you didn't catch that clue that I just gave you you'll know by the end of the video so we need to connect all of these pieces together first the easiest way to do this is going to be to take some tape and you won't need a whole lot of tape to do this you'll only need uh, a little bit per corner but what you're going to want to do um, let me switch over here, see if I can get my desk camera where it's in a good angle. Is that a good angle? Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, if you've got your tape, I've said before, if you're using a thicker tape like duct tape or gaff tape, it might be too much tape for you. You can tear gaff tape and duct tape down the middle like that. Um, you can tear some tapes. If you're using scotch tape, that's actually about the right size. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this corner and... Uh, so Jane asked if we you could use glue. Actually, yes, you could use glue. If you have like a hot glue gun um, or Elmer's glue or something like that, you could use either of those and it would be just way to do a project like this is actually with a hot glue gun. And so I took two, uh, one strip of tape, I tore it in half, I wrapped it around one edge, and then what I'm going to do just to make sure that this is really, really secure, I'm going to back this up just a little bit to show you is now that I have this piece, I'm gonna take a second piece and I'm gonna wrap it around here. So that makes sure if you're taping this on, you've got a little extra support. We The last thing we want is for your boat to come apart in the water. That would be what we call a sad day. So we do that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this corner just like we made and it doesn't have to be perfectly square, but if you're like me and you have a cutting mat that allows you to do such things, you can make sure it's perfectly square. O, C, D, O, C, D, yes, that's me, yes, that's me. Actually, no, because it should be C, D, O, then the letters are in the correct order. Um, we're going to tear off some more tape, and we're going to do the same exact thing that we did last time, where I'm going to tear it down the long way, and I'm going to take one piece. Actually, this one's big enough that I can probably make it into two. Uh, and if I find out I'm wrong, well, I'm wrong. That happens. And we're going to take it. We're going to tape it together. Eh, yeah, I was wrong. So guess what? That happens, folks. We are all wrong from time to time. It is not a problem to be wrong. It is a problem if you can't admit you're wrong. Um, sometimes we have to learn from our mistakes. And it's okay to say, hey, I made a mistake, but I'm learning. That's one of those valuable life lessons that we give you for free here on the show. So now I've attached the rear popsicle stick and we're going to do the same thing with the front. And there's really a couple ways you could do the front. Now if you wanted to be really really tricky and clever you could do the front popsicle stick at the same time that you do the front of the ship like so. I don't want to do that because that's a lot of work and angles, geometry. Um, so today we are going to keep it simple. I am going to do one first and then do the other. And again, if you're using like a hot glue gun, uh, even glue sticks honestly sometimes work for popsicle sticks. Uh, the only thing I'd be concerned about with glue sticks 
is whether or not they would last uh, in the water. And I don't know, I've not experimented with this, but that's something that you could actually experiment with yourself. See how it works, and then you can send me an email at kitbashing at madenewomaha.com and let me know, because I'm always interested. And really, this program, well, yes, you're following along with me right now and building this same project at the same time I am. Um, what I really want to see people do is to take these projects and take them to the next level and to experiment with them and to say, okay, well, on the show, we made this craft do this. What else can I do with it? And then you can spend some time after the show making your creation new and like our name, Made New, and then you can send those to us, and I love seeing them. Um, when I see people who have sent me uh, their creations, it really just, it makes my day because, uh, you know, it, it means that you guys are learning something in the process, which is the whole reason that we're really here today. We're doing fun projects, but we're also doing this because we want to learn. And so now, for the popsicle stick, you can attach this to the top or the bottom, but what you're going to want to do and I'm going to use the top today just so it's more visible, is you want to line it so that this is just roughly in the middle. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You'll see why in the next step. So we're going to wrap this around like so. Like so. There we go. All right. Once that's thoroughly wrapped around, we have it in about the right spot. We're going to do that again. And again, uh, the really easy way to do this is to just use uh, glue. If you use tape, uh, I'm using half of a strip of that gaff tape, but you could use whatever you want. Now, see how they don't quite line up here? That's okay. They they like they aren't really that even close. It's okay because we're gonna fix that in the next step. All right, we have created a rough body except for the front. Now to get the front where we want it, I'm gonna take another piece of tape, tear this off. We're gonna tear it in half again because I don't need quite that much tape. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna align this and we're just gonna to try to aim to get it centered. And if you've got it centered, you're gonna have a triangle that's about the same on all three sides. Bonus points. Anybody knows what that is? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller. Uh, I am going to tape this like so to attach these points together. And then that's holding it roughly where I want it. We're going to take one last piece of tape up front and we're just going to tape it the other way going from the back to the front or the stem to stern. And I don't remember all my nautical directions, but I know one way is stem, one way is stern, one way is port, one way is starboard. Uh, and those names actually, so while I don't remember which side is which, and I wanna say this is port and this is starboard. Um, wait, port, starboard, yeah. I'm going to look this up. I want you to look it up, too, and I want somebody to correct me in my comments later to say, port is this side and starboard is this side, and this is stem and this is stern. Somebody please do that for me. But I, I don't remember which sides they are, but uh, I do remember why they call one side port and one side starboard. Uh, port is the side that you would normally dock when you come into port, uh, and starboard is the side that is on the side of the stars when you're sailing. So there it is. Silly history that you didn't need to know. All right. I've got two ballasts just waiting to go here. So remember, uh, was that yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday during the rocket. Which, by the way, if you haven't yet, check out episode 16, the video with the rockets. Um, we have a competition going on now through the... 20th, which is Sunday, I want to say, or the 19th, I think you have to submit it by, and on the 20th, we will select winners. What we are doing is we are challenging you to build an indoor model rocket, um, which you could actually launch outdoor if you want to. 
And what's going to happen is you are going to take this rocket and you are going to build it and you're going to take a picture or a video and then you're going to make sure it gets to me at the kit bashing at madenewomaha.com address and one of the people who send me a picture of this rocket will get a DoorDash gift card because we live now in an era when having a DoorDash gift card is a really awesome thing. I know today I actually used DoorDash for breakfast because I was uh, hungry and I, the makerspace is a little bit low on food. So I went to DoorDash. But if you uh, go to yesterday's video, episode 16, we have the rules laid out. You can send me an email and we will make sure that you get entered in that competition. All right, back to what we were doing. We were working on our boat and we've got our ballasts here lined up. And I'm going to, what I'm doing right now is I'm just making a couple extra strips just to make sure that I've got my uh, ballast sealed up good because if these take on water, uh, your boat becomes a submarine and, and, that doesn't work for a multitude of reasons. So we're gonna tape this, and we're gonna tape that. All right. Now, we need to connect these ballasts to your vessel. So here's how we're gonna do that. First of all, I wanna kinda of line them up. And the way that I'm lining these up, let's go back to the desk cam so I can hopefully show you this. All right, there we go, desk cam pan over. The way we're going to line these up is by putting them almost centered on the craft. Not necessarily perfectly centered, but, but close. Maybe a little towards the back. Now, I'm starting with this point. Here is my challenge for you. I want you to think about, once this vessel is done, is this the best place for our ballasts? Or should I have the ballasts way in the back. Maybe I should have them extending past the back. Maybe I should have them farther forward. I want you guys to think about that and send me an email, kitbashing at gmail.com. Let me know what your opinions are. I would love to share them on our next episode. You can also post them in the comments and I'll do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I've decided for the purpose of this episode, we're going to put them roughly centered, maybe just a little towards the back. All right, cool. Now, all you have to do is wrap some tape around it like so. So I'm gonna take my tape, put some around the back, I'm gonna lift this up, bring it around the front, and wrap it around again. Boom. Again, you could use hot glue for this. That's a really, really good way to do this. Um, I'm gonna remind people of that 142 times. And the way I want you to notice one thing that I think is somewhat important, and maybe you disagree, and I'd love to see your hypothesis as to why, but you'll note that I put the pointy end, the, the syringe end, forward. So the reason I did that was because this area will cut through the water better than a giant bulky uh, cap at the end. That's my hypothesis anyway. I might be correct. I might be wrong. I have not tested the hypothesis by building the craft both ways and trying it. Maybe that again is something that you could do. You could build this in a couple different ways and you could then do an experiment. All right, so we're gonna get this one lined up. And I know what you're, if you're looking at this, you're going, oh wow, there's a lot of space in front of those ballasts. You are correct. There is a lot of space in front of those ballasts. And we're gonna be addressing that in just a minute here. But first, we wanna get the ballasts out of the way and get those tied down like so. One and a two, a one and a two. And wrap that tape around, very cool. All right, and so now we wanna address this area up front. The way we're gonna do that is with this little container. And this container is actually gonna serve uh, another purpose in the near future. But I'm gonna take this container for now and we're gonna put our marbles over here because we don't need them, but I still don't wanna lose my marbles. I am going to, I, I almost feel sad that Luke's not here because that's like one of the jokes he hates the most that I do every day, multiple times a day. Uh, and, and I love doing it because he hates it. 
not really. I love you, Luke. Hope you're watching. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to put this little cup on the front end. And, and it's okay if this sticks up a little bit. You'll see why in a minute. But we are going to take this so that, let me go to the overhead camera, where the, the point where the two sit right on the lip here, we're going to tape that down. One piece here, we're going to turn this around so I can do this more easily. One piece a var, as they say in the business. And that will hold our cup down in those dimensions. I still want to hold it down over here. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take just another piece of tape. And this side, depending on how you made your triangle, there may or there may not be a gap here. Um, I know on one of my previous builds when I was testing this, this spot was a little too small for the cup, but not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tape, wrap it around, go under. There we go. So now, if you've done this correctly, what you should have will be a front of your boat that has our little dosing cup, and it has two ballasts. Now, this dosing cup isn't just for aesthetics. This actually serves a purpose. When you have, even if you have something open-topped, so you see that there's no lid on this, this has air inside of it because air is everywhere. And so with this being in the front of the boat, that air has less density than water. So as soon as this dosing cup hits the water, this is going to want to float. And so that is totally cool. This will serve as another ballast in the front. Now, in addition to that, this can also serve as a cargo hold. As long as your density in here does not become more than the density of your water, this will still serve as a ballast, which is why those great big oil tankers uh, can be filled almost to the brim with oil and they still float because they keep just enough air in there that they stay above the surface of the water. Um, so now we have this part. We have this part. This is really, honestly, right now what we have would float. If I put this in the water, it would float. But, but what fun is a boat if it just sits there? We need something to float our boat. Um, to do that, we need to create a paddle. And to create a paddle, we need these. So, what I'm going to do is we are going to take the... I'll go back to my overhead camera. We're going to take that pair of scissors. Now, this part, I really, 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 really want you to be careful because uh, sometimes when you're cutting through something that's made out of wood, it can be really stiff, uh, and then all of a sudden it cuts all the way through. So don't, like, you know, try to cut with your finger here unless you you know, only want to count to nine for the rest of your life. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take about two inches of our popsicle stick. How do I know what two inches is? Well, there's a couple ways. If you still have some of your blue gaff tape, you could take one section of gaff tape, two sections of gaff tape, because this is a two inch thing of tape. If you have your three by five index cards, you could actually take one of your index cards, and if you take this and you fold it, eh, roughly fold one third, so remember that's three equal pieces. If you fold one third down, now all of a sudden, I have almost exactly a two inch piece. And you could also take your fingers. If you are a uh, full grown adult like me, usually about two fingers, give or take, is two inches wide. Um, you can also go like two knuckles is about two inches. So from here to the end of your finger, um, for a younger person, three fingers might be more like two inches. So there's several ways you can do this. But either way, regardless of how you do it, what we're going to do is we're going to take our measuring tool, whether that's our fingers or whatever, and then we're going to line our scissors up and we're just going to pinch it hard enough so that the scissors will hold it. And we're going to let go and we're going to make sure we're holding this with our fingers far away and then we're very slowly going to cut through like so cool all right so i made one piece we need to make four of those now the reason i've cut one out instead of four is because i wanted to use this as a template 
So now I can line this up and I line up what I'm doing here. Let me switch to my desk camera. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line up my ends so they're at the same spot. Then I'm going to come over here and just like I did with the previous one, I'm going to line up my scissors at the end and we're going to cut. And you should probably take this, this other piece away first just to make your life easier. But I'm going to cut that. All right, so now I have two of these. Okay, and if you don't have, here's the thing. Improvisation, improvisation is super, super important. If you don't have the popsicle sticks, what, or the, the tongue depressors, what could we possibly use? Maybe from your kit. Well, there's a couple things you might be able to do. You might be able to take tape and wrap it around uh, even your cards like this. That would keep them safe in water. You may be able to make paddles from tape itself. So there's definitely some things you could think about if you don't have tongue depressors anymore, if you've used them for other projects and you haven't taken those projects apart or whatever. And so again, I'm lining it up, making sure that my end over here is lined up, and then we're gonna just cut it like so. Make sure, hang on, I almost, in demonstrating that I had it lined up, I unlined it. And scissors will usually cut through popsicle sticks pretty good, especially if they're mom's nice scissors. Um, don't use mom's nice scissors. That will get you in trouble. Don't ask me how I know. All right. So now we have our four pieces. We are almost ready to row our boat. We need to create something to hold these all together because I could very easily, if I wanted to, I could just take tape and I could tape these into an L shape, but they'd be really flimsy and they'd move back and forth. We need to give it a little stability and that's where this guy comes in, your friendly paperclip. Paperclips are one of the most useful things on the planet. What we're going to do today is we're going to turn this into a bracket that we can mount all four of these guys on. How we do that? Well, if you look at the middle point of the paperclip, what you're going to see is that there is a point where this inside part overlaps with the outside. We're going to go about halfway where that overlaps and I'm going to use my thumb to hold it here and then we're just going to bend it 90 degrees like this and if you've done it like I did you should have kind of a, a cross shape kind of a t-shape where you've got three sides that are pretty well secured and you got this one side's got one little guy here now that side we need to do something about that because that's not enough you'll know if you look at this this end piece right here could very easily be bent up. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that little end piece and we are just going to bend him like that. See, we're just going to bend him upwards and make sure as best we can that it lines up with the other one. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but see, now we have two pieces sticking up here and we have four sides. This is going to be the bracket that keeps our paddles together. And I'm going to bend it just a little bit. All right, so look at that. That looks about right. Okay, so going back to our desk cam. Now that I have this set up, the fun part begins. We're going to attach all of these paddle pieces to our bracket that we've improvised from a paper clip. And I'm going to do that with my favorite thing on earth, tape. We've used so much tape on this episode, I really feel like uh, there should be a manufacturer that, that sends me money or congratulations or something. But we're going to take the first piece, and we're just going to stick a little bit of tape right here. I see people pulling into my parking lot. We are giving away protective equipment to first responders right now, and uh, they, some of them will be coming and picking things up while we are doing the show, probably. But uh, so we've put a piece of tape on the rubber or on the rubber band on the paper clip, and then we've put our very first piece here, and then all that we're gonna do is wrap that around, and wrap one side of the tape up, and wrap it around again. And so there you go, we've got this all set up. So now one of these is attached to our bracket. Perfect. Easy to do. 
we're going to tear off another piece of tape and we're going to do the opposite side and it doesn't really matter which side you started with um, you can do either side it will work just as fine um, but the best way to do it is if you do the two opposite sides now we're going to wrap it around and I should have wrapped it around the other side actually and so when I the reason I said I should have wrapped it around the other side was because I have, if you look at this closely, let me finish wrapping it and I'll show you on the desk cam. You can see that I have the paper clip metal on the same side and I had had this piece on the other side initially. You want, if you can, to put the paper clip metal on the same side because that's going to make sure your paddle is more correctly lined up. So with that said, now we need to create the last two paddles, which is the same exact process. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm going to put it on the metal first because that is the proper way to do it. Paper clip metal. Meet your paddle. We're going to wrap it. I'm going to wrap that. Now we have three out of four paddles. That is looking pretty good. All right. So next up, we're going to take one last piece of tape. Again, I'm going to watch which side I put the piece on. You can see that I have the piece of uh, paper clip on this side. So this is the side I'm going to put the tape on as well. So on both sides we're going to do that. And then I'm going to attach this. And try to get it as straight as I can. Wrap it around. And tape it in place. And if you get this right, you should have a piece that is roughly the same shape. And the, they should just about lay flat as an X. And if they don't, well, you can adjust it. Let me switch to the overhead cam so you can see something besides my knuckles. Um, but you can adjust it. But you want this to lay flat and be roughly in the shape of an X. And I had one paddle that I just got to do a little quick minor correction on and I think we're gonna be ready for the final step the final step um, I'm gonna wrap this make sure I've got this nice and wrapped alright there we go sweet alright so now we have our paddle and we have our paddle boat how shall we put them together well it's actually pretty easy tape. Now, we can skip the tape for, for just a second. We will be going back to it. Don't worry. Uh, I haven't given up on my tape obsession yet. All right. I've brought with me a number of rubber bands today. I'm losing my marbles. Great. Uh, I brought with me a number of rubber bands today. Now, this is another part that I want you to think about in uh, your production of this. Now in your kit, if you got one of our maker kits, um, if you didn't get one and you want to get one, you can always go to madeinomaha.com slash kit bashing to get a kit or to get the instructions because they are open source. You can make your own kit for free uh, if you want to do that. This is the website to do that at. Anyway, I've got a variety of rubber bands that, that are the type that we give out in our kit. We've got an, a what I want to call a normal rubber band. We've got kind of a skinnier one that's the same length. We've got a skinnier kind of longer one. And then I've got a really thick one. Now, I'm going to use for today, I'm going to use the, the normal rubber band. But I want you to experiment. I want you to, first of all, I want you to create a hypothesis. Because in scientific method, the way that it works is first you come up with a hypothesis. You say, I think something will do this. So we're going to see how the regular rubber band works. And, and when we after we see how the regular rubber band works, I want you to come up with some hypothesis. What would happen if I use this skinny band? What would happen if I use this longer skinny band? What would happen if I use this super thick yellow band? And, and come up with some hypotheses and then test them by adapting it. This is not a very hard build to do that to. And so this is a good chance to practice and to really work your muscles of the scientific method. All right, going back to our overhead camera, 
I'm going to show you how easy this is to add the paddle. And here's another thing. Now, one thing that's important for me to note is that when you're doing something such as uh, a scientific evaluation, you should only change one variable at a time. And the reason I'm saying that right now is because another variable you could tweak is where you put this rubber band. So you can see I put the rubber band about in the middle, and I just wrapped it around the whole vessel. So you got this rubber band right here. And maybe it would be better for me to move this farther forward or farther backwards. There's a limit because of how big our paddle is to where I can put it, but uh, within that limit, is there a better place? That's another hypothesis you can develop that you can test. So we're gonna take another little piece of tape because I love tape and I'm going to stick that to the top. So there's a bottom side that has the ballasts and the top side, and I'm gonna stick that to the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pass through, if you look here, I'm passing this so that it sits on both rubber bands, like so. And I'm gonna center it up in the boat. Um, I will tell you if you've got a hypothesis that the center might not be the best place for the ballast, that would be a fun thing for you to test Although uh, millennia of navigators and boat builders have tested that hypothesis and they will tell you the best place for the paddle is centered on your vessel. But hey, if you want to test it, go ahead. That's what science is all about, testing things and discovering new things. And, and maybe you're right and maybe you're wrong and that's okay because like I said, part of science is learning. Um, so now we have attached it. And what you should have now is a paddle in the middle that kind of spins freely, sort of, because this rear rubber band catches it. Totally okay. Because what we're gonna do is we are gonna wind it around both rubber bands, and that's gonna combine that energy so that we're actually using both bands. Once you rotate it a few times, now when I let go, what you're gonna see is that that spins. So this paddle will actually make your boat move. And to prove that, uh, I have a space that we can do that. Now before I get to there though, I think it is important that we deck our boat out. So I've got another paper clip, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it out straight, as straight as I can. This is not gonna be perfect, except for the very end, which I'm gonna leave in an L this way, but then I'm also going to bend uh, this way. All right, so now if you see what I've done here, I've created the end of this has a little bit like a V shape almost right here. And that V shape then is 90 degrees relative to the long arm. The reason I created this is so that we have a uh, little mast to hang a little flag on. Because why not? I mean, we got a boat. So remember that uh, 3x5 index card we used earlier to measure? I'm just going to cut a little triangle out for uh, a flag. This is purely decorative. Y there is absolutely zero uh, functional value of this whatsoever. And But I just want to do it. And I get to do what I want because this is my show. Um, I'm going to write on the flag whatever. You know, you could draw a design or whatever. I'm going to write Jim Rocks. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe the desk cam will uh, give you a little bit of hope uh, at seeing that. Yeah, it's the truth. All right, so uh, we need to attach this to our boat. How do we do that? Well, it's super duper easy. Here's our back of our boat to attach our uh, little mast, we are going to take this little V, so this little V that we created earlier, and we're going to take more of my favorite substance, tape, and we're just going to tape it, we're going to tape it on like so. So, here, let's move this over here, that might work better. There, put a little piece of tape here. And I'm going to try to center it because, I mean, symmetry is cool. Overhead camera. And once I've got this kind of centered up where I think it belongs, 
I'm just going to wrap the tape down. Cool. All right, we've got our little uh, mast here. And then I'm going to take my scotch tape, because the blue tape a little bit ugly, and we're going to attach this. Boom. Awesome. All right. So now, I wish I had uh, the rights to use the 2001 Space Odyssey music. We have our amazing, super cool boat, the SS Jim Rocks paddle boat. We need to put this to the test. And the best way to put this to the test would be a water landing. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Of course, I don't have water you know, a lake here. I don't have a bathtub here. You might have a bathtub or something else you can use. I don't. All that I have is this giant tub of water. All right. That's what I got. That's what I'm going to use. That's what you get to use if uh, you have such a thing. Now, uh, you might find that uh, You've got a Tupperware container like this, but honestly, if you have a bathtub at home, that is like the best thing on earth. So here we go. I'm going to drop it in the water, and you can see that it floats in the water. The ballasts are doing their job. They're keeping the craft above the surface of the water. This ballast up here is sticking out of the water quite a bit, which is good. We're going to see why in a minute. And now, if I wind this... And you're going to want to wind it backwards, so like towards your flag, if you put the flag on, which you should because, let's face it, that's super cool. I'm going to wind it. All right, so now as soon as I let go, it's going to want to paddle across, all right? That was, you know, a, a little bit unexciting because of the fact that my boat is so... Uh, close. But what I brought the marbles into the equation for, the reason I've been talking about these is because in addition to this boat being fun to build, we can also carry cargo. Now, cool thing that we use the dosing cup so that you can see the lines in here. And if you look at the lines, let me go to my desk cam. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to fish out the three marbles I put in here so far. Loop, loop. It's wet. All right. Now you should be able to see in my dosing cup the lines. This is not a waterproof camera, so I'm being kind of careful. But see where the water sits? There we go. See where the water sits here? As we drop in more marbles, watch that water level continue to rise. I put in three marbles, and now it's it's gone a pretty good way, whoa, uh, into the water. Let's say, uh, I don't know, maybe, can, I, can I take more than three? I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to put a fourth one, that really, really pushes it low. Now here's the downside of an open top ballast. If the water level gets above this ballast, Water will go in, and if water goes in, then all of a sudden you have a boat that doesn't float. You have a submarine, and that won't float your boat. So, we have our boat. We've loaded on four, which I believe is the maximum capacity of this boat. I'm going to wind it back again because this is my favorite part. Again, if you wind yours... Uh, many, many times, you should get a pretty good distance out of it. The gaff tape will hold pretty good underwater. You see a couple pieces that have started to loosen just a little bit. Um, that's okay. It won't affect anything. I'm going to keep twisting here. All right, we're still floating. We're still floating, folks. And let go. And even with those four, it, this could have gone a much, much farther distance than it did in my little tub that's six inches longer than the boat. Pretty cool. So here's the overhead camera to show you that one more time. We built a boat that floats and can carry cargo. Uh, it has a four marble capacity the way that we built it. 
Can you modify this? Can you make it better? That is my challenge for you. If you are watching this video today, can you make this so that it will hold all six marbles? Or can you hold it so it will hold even more cargo? Maybe that means adding another ballast. Maybe that means changing the design entirely. But I would challenge you to do that because if you find something that someone else has created, such as this kit, and you make it new, you make something better out of it, that is innovation. And that's what we're all about here, teaching innovation, teaching science and technology, engineering, mathematics, even art. And so I want you to keep tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning. Remember, if you want to send me your photos, I love getting those. I get them almost every day from people who have built our builds. I love, love seeing them. Uh, I will put them on the show if I can. Uh, kitbashing at madenewomaha.com is how you do that. Um, also, if you want to go check out our website, madenewomaha.com slash kitbashing. We have all the previous episodes on there. We also have uh, several other little uh, things that are very, very helpful. And then lastly, if you go to facebook.com slash madenewomaha, you can get hold of us there. Uh, my name is Jim. I am your host for today. You have been watching Kit Bashing. Thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully you'll join us again next time as we make something new together. Take care now.